All right, Paco, we need to start off this year with a bang. Make sure all the viewers can see how colorful and dangerous this place is. All right, boss, consider it done. Straight down. Yep. Do you get a free drop from those guys? Or? <laughs> Crikey, Paco, what is this? You said colorful and dangerous, boss. Oh, for God's sake. Welcome back to Golf This Week, your source of news for everything that's happened on and off the golf course. Dustin Johnson has split from Adidas after 15 years of working together, and the reason why is quite interesting. As the Live Golf League will no longer foot the bill for all the travel and accommodation of the team's players and their caddies, each team will have to raise money for their travel and playing expenses. One way is by winning prize money from tournaments, but a much more consistent revenue model is finding companies that sponsor the whole team, just like team sports like basketball or football do. Despite being the kit sponsor of many successful teams from other sports, it seems like Adidas just couldn't make a deal with Dustin Johnson's four aces team, who stated that they wanted the entire shirt and that he needed a clean break to start his team. Given that there are 12 teams in the Live Golf League, it will be interesting to see who sponsors the different teams and how these team sponsorships affect the sponsors of the individual players. A big win for Live was last week's announcement that confirmed that Live players are allowed to participate in all four of golf's major championships. The RNA and the PGA of America confirmed that the 2023 Open Championship and the 2023 PGA Championship, respectively, will have no restrictions for Live players. This is a big win for viewers that want to see the best players, some of whom are at live, battle it out on the biggest stages of the game. It'll also make for some good TV if a PGA Tour and a live player scrap it out for a major title, which happened on a small scale when McElroy won against Reed on the DP World Tour this year. This is the section of the video where we summarize what has happened on golf's main tours this week. Starting off with a PGA Tour, the Honda Classic was held this week at the PGA National. Despite being a tournament with very memorable moments over the years, this week's field was not filled with the top names the tournament is used to. The quality of play is still very high, with Chris Kirk winning in the throwing playoff, but star power is what ultimately sells tournaments to the general public. Billy Horschel, who finished tied 42nd, noted that he was disappointed in the PGA Tour that the event had been relegated to such a weak field. This, he said, was mainly down to scheduling, as the tournament follows the Genesis and precedes both the Players' Championship and the Arnold Palmer. Most players would rather miss this tournament in order to be fresh to compete for these more prestigious and better paid events. Nevertheless, that didn't stop 9 top 20 players, including Rahm, Homer and McElroy, from playing a Pro-Am the day after the Honda Classic. With 12 of the top 20 playing, this Pro-Am probably has stronger fields than both last week's Honda Classic and Liv's inaugural 2023 event combined. Speaking of Liv, they held their first event of the season in Mayakoba, Mexico. Charles Howard III won the individual title with 16 under and Team Crushers, which he's a part of, won with 26 under. Not a particularly interesting week, with Cameron Smith providing most of the action. The DP World Tour played in India this week on probably one of the most stunning courses on the schedule. The course also proved to be one of the hardest, with 11 of the 18 holes being played over par for the week. Marcel Seam won with a score of 14 under, and alongside being his first win in 9 years, this Twitter user also bestowed him the title of being the first player to win on the European Tour donning a Hawaiian shirt. Dylan Mostert won his second event on the Sunshine Tour this week at the Nelson Mandela Bay Championship at Humewood Golf Club. He needed recovery shots like this to shoot 16 under for the week to end up on the top step. Due to the tournament being co-sanctioned by the Challenge Tour, he has also gained the ability to play on the secondary European Tour next year. On the LPGA Tour's regular season opener, Lilia Vu edged out local favorites Natakrita Vong Tavilap and Ataya Titikun by shooting a final round 64 for her first LPGA Tour win. She made 25 birdies and one eagle during the week to pick up a $255,000 check. That covers this week's golf news. More long-form content will be coming soon. Cheers for watching and have a great day.